Hi everybody, it's Martin the Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying uh, another dry fly it's a formulator, it's Randall Kaufman pattern uh, it's quite a, an involved tie, There's none of the individual steps are that difficult but it's busy um, originally a stone fly imitation but I mean, it's good if there's hoppers or it's a big kind of generic terrestrial worth having in your box and it's a, nine, a fun fly to tie as always there will be a materials list in the description along with a link to uh, Patreon and Paypal for anybody that would like to support the channel and get access to the members only content etc uh, and the giveaways that we're going to start having so I've got my hook and my vice this is a 3x long and it's a size 8 you can tie them bigger or smaller up to you um, it's a 5263 TMCO <clears throat> and I've just covered the shank with thread and I'm going to come back to the two thirds point right and that's where I'm going to start my tail tie and that's my mark for the the uh, abdomen which then allows me to sort of keep my proportions. So I've got some yellow deer here. I'm tying it in a sort of tan and yellow version that seems to work quite well around here. But just tie them the colour combinations that you like. Just cleaning this. Uh, you can use elk or deer. I'm just taking any short rubbish out of it and not under fur so that it will stack. Then into the stacker. I usually like the tail to be like a gap, a hook gap off the back. That's what I would say is sort of a nice length. But it's up to you. You can make it a wee bit longer, a wee bit shorter. Don't make it huge. Switch hands. Drop back. And I'll come. Tail them in line with where the barb is. Just trim, tear away all that. <clears throat> uh, waist. Now I'm going to tie my ribbon now um, because I just find it a wee bit easier and um, then trying to come back in against the foam. So that's just gold wire. And then I'm going to get a strip of tan foam. Just check it about the should be about the gap. About the, about the width of the hook gate. It's just a bit thick this, a bit wide. And then I'm going to lie this, the square edge, but halfway back into the tail. Now I'm going to rock it slightly towards myself. I don't know if, how well you can see that. I'm not sitting it right on top. I'm just going to allow the thread to pull it over, right, the thread tension. If you've got it sitting so it's like at about a 45 degree towards yourself, then that first turn of thread just allow the thread to carry it over on top and then that way you've always got a nice square uh, back that's where it should be I'm using ice stub for the body uh, the abdomen I'm going to go with a tan like a tan colour UV tan but again up to you any any dubbing any dubbing that's suitable for a dry fly hey, you know, don't put on something that's Probably soak in loads of water. But seal for SLF. Something 
something kind of coarse and fibery. I like a bit of sparkle. I'm going to just take this nub and get it right in there. Tighten that up. Now that I'm anchored. And build my thorax. Uh, sorry, my abdomen. That's not bad. And you should see here, I've stopped slightly behind the butts of that um, deer here. That's the butts there, that's, and then the end of the dubbing is a millimetre behind it. Great, because there's quite a lot of tying in and it's very easy to rush your head on this fly. Right, so that's the first, the first sort of important thing to note, I would say, um, as far as getting your proportions. Right, don't, I've left that mark, but I don't tie right up to the mark yet. I'm allowing space to tie it, get other tying in done. So I've got my hackle here, this is just a, uh, white and saddle, it's a grizzly dyed golden olive a West Island, a while ago. Just got to wind it back, even turns. Quite close together, and I'm coming right back. I'm going to stop it. I like to catch it in so that the catch in is on the top of the hook so that any trimmed a bit is hidden by the foam and then I just keep going with my rib just go quick, you don't catch any if you're quick I'll catch that in and wind the back and now I'm actually at that point after tying in the hackle in my rib I'm actually at the point where I uh, I marked earlier. Just got to sweep these hackle fibres down, and I'll pull the foam forward, and then tie that off. So four turns is plenty. I'll just leave this. Don't worry about that just now. Now we're ready for the collection of wings. So the, the first under wing is about a flash. Um, crystal flash, flash about, it doesn't really matter. Up to you. I've got rainbow crystal flash, I really like it for under wings. I've got, I don't know, half a dozen fibres, seven fibres. I fold it over the thread three turns and just flatten that a wee bit and then we're going to come in trim the length of the tail right. and then I've got some web wing it's just a the wing's just a sort of mesh sheet, you know, whatever the sort of sheets, these sort of cloth sheets you like to use for your wings. MFC does them, hairline does different stuff. I've cut it the width of the body and I'm just going to round the end. I'll tie that slightly shorter than the flash, right? So the flash is the length of the deer hair tail and I'm going to tie the web wing halfway back into the tail, right? So the tail after the foam, halfway back into that space, is about right? And then I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the foam, I'm going to rock it towards myself and allow that thread just to carry it over Make sure it's straight, check it from above, and then cinch down nice and tight. And you can trim that close, you don't need to worry about that, that's very grippy, it does not come out. 
Then we're going to get another uh, bit of deer here. Slightly heavier this time. Same stuff. Elk would be nice. But I've got deer here in this colour. Again, clean it. Make sure you got all the rubbish out. And get it in your stacker. You want these tips to be well aligned. broken when they're broken here just take them away <clears throat> I'll have that the same length or slightly or just slightly longer than the web wing right, I, want, I still want that pearl to be visible turns at this point it will, the butts will have crept so you can just sort them tighten up again run through those butts right just make sure everything's on top Sighter, I just use poly yarn or Antron or anything, it doesn't really matter, any synthetic yarn. Um, this fly actually rides quite low um, in the, that white, if, especially if you're in sort of rough water, the white uh, flash of the yarn's quite good and it's a good vehicle for your floating, you know, you can rub the mucilin into it. at home, you know, get them well waterproofed and they'll stay nice and nice and buoyant. Two turns over, fold it back, and I'll just grab all this, pull it up, quick trim it half the length or so thereabouts of the hair. <clears throat> right, I'm going to tie in my next hackle, hackle which is just a this is just a natural grizzly um, saddle again and it's slightly longer than the body hackle Right, I'm just checking to make sure I've got plenty of space at the front here. You want to divide this thorax section in half. Right, so you've got the tie-in here and then you should have this roughly the same space in front of the, the foam. Right, so don't don't lash your foam down all the way. Rubber legs, single strand, cut it in half. Just going to offer it in on my side. Single turn is enough to hold it. Just check the length, get the offside done as well. There we go. Just cheat that back a bit. I like these legs to be like the length of the body ish, maybe a shade longer. Just come in, just even them. 
But it's up to you. You can tie you can tie the leg longer or shorter if you like. I'm just got to wrap back, securing them. Make sure the legs are in position as you like them. And then I'll get some yellow dubbing. Still ice dub. Uh, I'm going to dub my thorax. Dub back. Right, I find it. I find that I get a better result if I dub back because you've got a bit of a hump here. So if you dub back the way first, again, just make sure the legs are where you want them to be. If you dub back the way, it's, it prevents it some, from like, slipping um, at the at the bump there. You don't need a ton of dubbing here. And I'll come forward. I'll go like that. Pull the foam back and just build up the dubbing. And I've left a small space at the eye there, right? And I'm going to tie in my hackle. A couple of turns behind, maybe three, two and a half, something like that. A couple in front. Come over the thread. Oh. I lost a turn there. There we go. Come over your thread. Catch that in. And then fold the stem back, draw everything that's going forward, just pull it back, tie up, hold the thread tight and snap that away. That looks alright. I'm going to just smooth this hackle down, same as I did with the, the abdomen. Pull that foam forward and secure it just behind the eye two or three turns holds it then you can lift it up whip finish Well, you don't catch any of your hackle. Stabilise your hook and make sure that knot's nice and tight. Snip away your thread. Trim your front section. It's a bit long. You can knock the corners off if you want, which I like to do. To give you that sort of wee slightly rounder profile. And then I'll just pull these front legs forward. I'm going to leave them still quite long. But it's just a bit shorter than the rear legs. That's fine. Like that. And then the last thing to do is just get a bit of head cement. Over the wraps. And that's it. The formulator. Big dry fly. Like if you live somewhere where there's a salmon fly hatch or with big stone flies or anything like that, this is well worth having in your box. It's also a good sort of generic terrestrial. So tie some up, try them out. Hope you liked that, hope it was useful. Remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines guys, bye!